Thecomas are sex-caused stromal tumours and account for 7% of sex-caused stromal tumours of the ovary. They tend to occur in peri- or postmenopausal women, the usual age being between 50 and 55 years, and around 10%, however, occur in the under 30s. Thecomas are almost always benign. The vast majority of thecomas are unilateral, but around 3% of them are bilateral. They may present with hormonal symptoms and an ovarian mass, with postmenopausal bleeding in around 60% of cases, and this is caused by endometrial hyperplasia or adenocarcinoma. Rarely, thecomas may present with Meg syndrome, where there is ascites and a pleural effusion and luteinized thecomas may cause sclerosing peritonitis. Grossly, thecomas are usually between 5 and 10 centimeters in diameter with a solid yellow, grey or white cut surface. Here is an example of a thecoma and you can see that it is indeed 10 centimeters in diameter. And when this thecoma is bisected, you can see it is well circumscribed with a white cut surface. Histologically, thecomas are composed of diffuse sheets of cells with pale grey cytoplasm and indistinct cell membranes. The nuclei are ovoid or round and occasionally grooved, and mitotic activity is either absent or low. Luteinized thecomas contain luteinized cells that are present either as single cells, nests or nodules. The immunostaining for thecomas is positivity for inhibin and calretinin. Here is a low power view of a thecoma. You can see it is well circumscribed. And here are some other histological images of a thecoma showing diffuse sheets of cells with indistinct cell membranes and greyish cytoplasm. Finally, what is the difference between a thecoma and a fibroma? Well, fibromas are common, thecomas are rare, and thecomas produce steroid hormones, and thecomas also have a population of cells with clear or vacuolated cytoplasm. And here is another example of a thecoma. You can see that there is a population of cells with rather clear cytoplasm, distinguishing it from a fibroma.